uh, well hi now this video is for people who are looking forward to launch any e-commerce business and then they don't know how do they launch e-commerce they just don't know how do they buy the website or how do they start doing the marketing what marketing platforms they choose or in fact how do they start the marketing of the business or else someone who is a student and now you are trying to learn how to do marketing for e-commerce so through this video we are going to cover, cover these two people is starting with the requirements that you need for e-commerce business setup and then you will talk about the marketing for e-commerce now if i simply start with the requirements the first most important requirement is to have the brand building in fact when i say brand building it's really important for people to understand that e-commerce is not only about having a website it's not only about having a brand now i know you are really excited to launch these kind of brands after seeing the stories of amazon maybe Mintra, maybe for noon in Middle East, maybe for companies like Blinkit. And then people are really thinking about launching these stores with full of products. But then you have to understand that launching of these stores is one thing, but competing with giants is a very difficult task. So you really have to understand what niche you are having in the market, what exact service that you're having in the market, which is not available. So you have to think from the perspective of providing the value to the market where this value is not being provided. Otherwise, you will be having an e-commerce store, maybe with a full of different products, and yet you won't be making profits in the market. So e-commerce is all about generating profits from the store. Otherwise, you will end up companies like uh, Snapdeal or maybe companies like uh, Jabong, companies like uh, we had eBay earlier even now we don't have eBay. So like you really need to think about what problem of the market you are solving and then you can have an e-commerce portal. Now, first of all, it's all about selecting the brand, understanding the category and then deciding the e-commerce portal in terms of having the website for that brand. Once you have the website fixed, in fact, for having a website, you need to have three different things. You need to have a domain, you need to have a hosting. We will talk about all of these things in detail, but then Third, you have to understand the product inventory for that brand. What all products you're going to keep in that brand. Again, you need to put all of these products in detail. Then digital properties in terms of if you'll be having any uh, Facebook page, for, if you'll be having an Instagram profile, if you'll be having any YouTube channel. So what all properties you need to set for that brand, then how will you do organic marketing for the brand? Which means how will you do SEO, social media posting, maybe email marketing, maybe affiliate marketing. And then you will come to a point when you have to heavily spend in marketing in terms of paid marketing, which means you have to advertise on platforms like Google, advertise on platforms like Facebook, Instagram. And finally, if you don't have the marketing funds available, you eventually look to upload the information or become a seller for places like Amazon, Mintra, Noon. So in this entire video, we'll start with the branding of our store and then we'll talk about listing at different places. Now, so you'll understand through this Google Excel sheet, which starts with having the information, like you have to decide a brand name first. After deciding the brand name, which you must have already decided, if you have already decided to have an e-commerce portal, then you need to decide the brand colors. Now, these brand colors are really important because when you go to a designer to create the logo, the designer asks you to have these brand colors. Now, once the brand colors are available, you have to decide the product type in which category you are going to make this e-commerce store. Once this product type is set, you have to think about the target market. That's right. It's really important to understand the audience insights and also decide the audience targeting even before the launch because even if you launch the website before understanding the audience you won't be having the right strategy for that audience so it's really important to understand that what market you're gonna tap now once you have decided the target market for example if you have a website for a jewelry products then the target market has to be majorly females it has to be majorly youths somewhere in between 18 to 24 age range maybe you need to target uh tier a cities like the metro cities so that's why it's important to understand who is going to be a target market and then the website has to be created or the 
social media post creatives has to be created according to that market according to those people and mindset then we have the we have to choose a domain name now people think it's very difficult to decide the domain name but i think it's quite easy you simply have to get into godaddy by clicking on this link and then the domain comes at a cost of 500 to 1000 rupees for a year that's the average cost for any available domain once you have the domain name selected you can simply buy the domain name and then you can start with adding more things to the domain now you have two ways one if it's an e-commerce website you can simply make a store using shopify now shopify is a e-commerce uh like cms we call it content management system or basically a solution which is available for people or for companies who are having the e-commerce stores now if you become a shopify partner or if you apply at shopify then you're going to get the free hosting ssl and e-commerce themes which means you really don't have to worry about purchasing any ssl or hosting for shopify all you have to do is to get into a shopify account and in fact the first three months for shopify is only going to cost you 20 20 INR. and then the regular monthly plan for shopify is coming with the cost of 2000 INR a month now once you are done with shopify you don't need to think about anything like ssl hosting at least you don't have to worry about ssl or hosting if you don't go with shopify then you have options to go with woocommerce which is a e-commerce product of wordpress or magenta 2.0 and if you go with any of these two website uh, creation languages in that case it's going to charge you somewhere in between these amounts and that setup duration is going to take at least around a month but with shopify it's going to take up to 7 to 10, 10 days and then the shopify website is quite easy to create now once you have the shopify website available then the two next things which you need for the business is going to be a payment gateway because once you get orders on the website you have to place it through you have to take the orders or the payments through a payment gateway and that's why it's needed that you take a payment gateway for razor pay or pay you the initial setup cost is totally free but then you have to pay them around two percent per order fee when the products are being paid or the payments are being paid through any of these gateways if the payments are happening through cod which means cash on delivery you don't have to worry about paying any percentage to these payment gateways once the payment gateway is set you also have to look into having a logistics partner a company who is actually going to deliver your product in that city or in that area if you are in india you can simply sign up with ship rocket or delivery and then this is the average cost per order in in that location so once you have all of these properties set in fact even before setting up all of these properties i recommend people to start having the product inventory because if you have already decided your business it's important to have the products for that business now in terms of product inventory you have to understand that you need to decide the product first how many products you are going to advertise for this particular brand under this product particular brand because as per the products the website the marketing and everything has to be decided now once you have the products decided you have to assign id to each and every product you have to get the titles written for those products you have to get the descriptions written for those products highlights and features product pricing and product category and eventually you have to get at least four square products for each and every product in these sizes now you must be thinking it's a lot and why the hell i'm asking you to have all of these things for having the product inventory but think about what you get when you go at amazon.com or when you go at noon.com so when you go to any of these portals you will find a lot of images with features with reviews with the like product titles with features otherwise people won't get attracted and, and they don't buy their products so that's why it's important that we have the entire product inventory set first now once we have the inventory set then we can look into how to market our product so before we talk about marketing and advertisement it's important that we have this entire product inventory set the inventory has to be shared with the person who creates the website and once we have the website available along with the payment gateway and hosting and logistic partner then only we can think about getting into the marketing part of e-commerce portals now 
in terms of marketing i hope you already know we have two ways of marketing the first form of marketing is free marketing which means companies like google and facebook or instagram does not charge anything for this form of marketing and then we have the paid marketing which is called as advertisement now in the free marketing what you do is to start with is to have a facebook page now the creation of this page is completely free but it's highly needed that you have a facebook page in the account once you have the facebook page then you simply create the instagram profile so we don't create instagram page we can only have the instagram business profiles so we have instagram business profile then you can have the youtube channel you can have the google analytics account set to track how many people are coming on the website what they are doing in the website for how long they are staying on the website once we have the analytics set we need to have a search console set up so that we can list our website in the search console so google can know that you have a website available in that market then you have to create the google ads merchant center account this is required for people who are looking forward to run google ads you shall be having a google business listing on google maps and then finally if you are looking forward to do seo you need to decide keywords for that seo services now even though all of these services are totally free if you are skilled enough you can create all of these things by yourself or else you can connect with a freelancer or, a, or an agency who can take some service fee for having all of these things created for you now once you have these organic properties created at least once you have the facebook page instagram business profile and youtube channel then you can look forward to start marketing starting with the monthly posting and boosting so what you do you have to decide how much post you're gonna do on a, all of these portals on facebook page on instagram business profile so let's say you are doing one post a day so you have to decide you have to choose uh, like a freelancer or a social media specialist who can start posting your products but even before posting the products he'll be asking you to provide the product images he'll be asking you to provide the product information the product description and title that's why it's needed that you have a product inventory first if you won't have a product inventory you can't share the information or marketing decisions to any of these freelancers you can't like ask them to take any action on marketing so it's needed that you have the product inventory first and then you have a website first even though if you don't have a website you can still have the facebook and instagram profiles you can have your information posted on those profiles but at least the product inventory is something which is needed before you start marketing now if you have decided that you'll be doing one post a day you simply have to start doing those postings on facebook along with that you do those postings for instagram as well and then you also boost that post so people get to know that you are available in the market now the reason why you need to do boosting is because initially when you have facebook page or instagram profile you don't have any followers and then your post will not be reaching to a good number of people and then the question is what's the point of posting what's the point of getting all of these posts created from a designer if you your posts are not getting any eyeballs so it's important that you start doing some boostings as well boosting is something which is paid service by companies like facebook and instagram and you pay some amount to these companies but this boosting is majorly for awareness not for advertisement or sales then we have the next part which is all about paid marketing now paid marketing is the most important part and this paid marketing is gonna run your marketing campaigns so now these campaigns can get traffic to the website and also start generating the sales now, in terms of paid marketings for e-commerce you have the platforms starting with google ads when you run search campaign remarketing campaign or shopping campaign along with performance max campaign so these four are the most important campaigns for google ads if not google then you go for meta ads which means facebook and instagram ads and here you do a couple of campaigns like conversion campaign you do product catalog campaign and you also do traffic campaigns which brings the traffic on the website and then from there you start selling the products then you have platforms two video platforms like tiktok and youtube which you can take in consideration for advertisement and selling of your products now once you have all of these platforms set then you have to decide 
I mean, if you are going to do it, then you have to decide to hire a marketing agency and also a monthly charges for all the campaigns. Now, I have seen people who are really confused about these monthly charges because they just don't know how they start off their activities. They have never made any marketing plan or any media plan. Now, something which is really needed to have understanding of these monthly charges or these marketing plan is called as media planning. So media planning is basically an entire plan that tells you what all campaigns you are going to create for Google, what all campaigns you are going to create in Meta, what will be the average daily or monthly spend for those campaigns, how many impressions you're going to expect from those campaigns, and finally, what result you are going to get from these campaigns in terms of conversions. So once you have the marketing plan set, or once you have the media plan set, you understand what exactly is going to be the return for your business. Now we can get back into our e-commerce business setup sheet from where we can also look into the marketplace setup. So if you're not deciding to go with advertising under Google and Facebook, you have another option where you simply list your products for free in these portals. You don't need to have a website. You don't need to have any advertisement service like Google or Facebook, all you need is to upload your products in these portals. Starting with uploading the products on Amazon, before to which you have to become an Amazon seller. So once you become the Amazon seller, you can simply upload your product inventory into this Amazon seller account. If not Amazon, you can get into Flipkart, Mintra, or you. And there also you have the marketing campaigns, which are made to drive more sales from there. Once you have these products set, then you can start thinking about doing the marketing. Now, this was all about for people who are looking forward to become or to have an e-commerce store for themselves. Then there's a point for people who are looking forward to become a marketer, to become a digital marketing expert. For those people, first of all, you have to understand the project planning. How do you plan the project for e-commerce? So you plan, you make an entire sheet that talks about the marketing objective, that talks about the market service requirement, that talks about the content type which is needed, the user targeting, the marketing duration, the paid cost, advertisement platforms, organic platforms, and what could be the KPIs for that market, which is called as digital marketing project planning. Once you are set for digital marketing project plan, then you have to do the keyword research and planning, keyword planning for Google ads as well as SEO. Because using this keyword planning, you get to know the average bidding amount. You get to know how much you are paying for one single click from these platforms. Once you have the understanding of the bidding amount, then only you can create a media plan, a plan which is going to have the cost for each and every campaign. A plan which is going to tell you what number of conversions or sales you are looking to get by the end of the month or maybe by the end of the quarter. And this plan tells you what is going to be the expected cost per sale for that particular project. Now, I know it's difficult to find out the cost per sale. And in fact, you can heavily fail in getting the right cost per sale. But when you get into a project, when you start taking the projects in the companies, in fact, when you go for any interview in digital marketing agency, they look up to you if you are able to create these, these kind of marketing plans. If you'll be able to launch all of these campaigns through the marketing plan, if you'll be able to generate returns for these companies. So now, if you are someone who is a client, you can simply get into this sheet, which you can download from somewhere in the description of this video. Otherwise, if you are a customer, I'm sorry, if you are a freelancer or if you are a, a student, you can simply get into this project based Google Ads training course. And here we end this video with a quote by Seth Godin, which says, don't find customer for your products, find products for your customer, which totally means you have to find out the products which your customer are looking in the market. You have to provide something in the market which people are not getting, which people don't have, so that you provide a value to the market. I'll see you in the next videos of this course.